Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Fred Song. I'm currently a postdoctoral research associate at the University of Connecticut, or working with the Connecticut Transportation Safety Research Center. Uh, previously, I was a, a PhD student at the University of Wisconsin, working with uh, Dr. David Noyce and uh, also my colleague, Matt Chaturi at uh, Traffic Operations and Safety Laboratory. So today I'm gonna talk about our Safer Scene project uh, entitled Defining Safety Critical Scenarios for Simulation-Based Automated Vehicle Evaluation. So first, before diving into our study, I would like to show you a video here. This is taken by Waymo uh, at one of their vehicle testing in Chandler, Arizona. You can see an, a, a crash happened after this. So, uh, so a Waymo vehicle was driving on the road and at this intersection, a human driven vehicle moved across the road and hit the Waymo automated vehicle. So the, this is the aftermath. Um, the Waymo test driver and the second party driver were injured uh, on the day of collision and the police report uh, that the automated vehicle uh, was in automatic mode, but later Waymo statement said that it was in manual driving mode. So uh, in this case, AV was not to blame, but uh, well, if the automated driving system was driving the vehicle, how will it handle this scenario? So this kind of motivated uh, our research. So as we know, automated vehicles are being developed with a goal to bring safety and efficiency to future transportation. The Society of Automotive, uh, Automotive Engineers, or SAE, defined that uh, vehicles uh, with different levels of automation and currently vehicles with level three and level four SAE automation are being widely tested, both on open roads and also in simulation. So, and, uh, so the tests of uh, automated vehicles is to evaluate their abilities to navigate existing environment and handle interactions with human drivers, uh, such as the example that I just showed in the previous slides. And also here I included another video clip here, where in this case, no crash happened, but you can see that the, the automated vehicle was pretty hesitant at this intersection when making a permissive left turn. So this can lead to some, uh, situations like, if not crash, a near crash. So uh, tests are being carried out, as I said, on open roads, close quarters, and in simulation environments. In all three types of tests, vehicles are evaluated and improved by completing safe driving in both normal driving and safety critical scenarios. In open road and closed course tests, it is time consuming and also money consuming to test a large number of scenarios and to cover many operational design domains or ODDs. Uh, to the contrary, simulation tests can comprehensively test a large number of scenarios efficiently and with low cost. But to achieve that, a comprehensive library of scenarios is essential. Uh, creating scenarios for AV testing is challenging and is being uh, actively researched. So a definition of scenarios as given by Albrecht et al. in their uh, 2015 paper is a description of the temporal development between several scenes in a sequence. So following the definition of scenario by Albrecht, I defined uh, crash scenarios to be a sequence of scenes in crashes and represent it as a sequence of events that describe moving participants' actions and interactions 
plus a depiction of the operational design domain. This can include such as the relatively uh, static surrounding environmental conditions and also human factors. So for the testing of level three and four AVs, in addition to normal operating scenarios like the lane changing one shown in this uh, picture on the right, uh, crash scenarios are also necessary because crash scenarios have led human drivers to fail for uh, L3 and L4 AVs that will share roles with human drivers. Crash scenarios are good challenges to examine their safety performance. So the order list of actions or events is a sequence. So uh, here I give you, I give you an example uh, of this uh, comic strip here. This is actually a, a sequence of events. You can see that uh, if you follow the order of these uh, pictures here, uh, it tells you a story of what happened between Superman and uh, some other people here. So crash sequence of events can capture, similarly with this comic strip, the progression of crash. So we can think that it should be useful in developing test scenarios for AB evaluation. The sequences uh, as an embedding of ordered information has been used and researched in biological and social sciences. Similar with social sequences of events, which are events ordered chrono chronologically, crash sequences are an embedding of information about crash's temporal development. Uh, crash sequence is an essential component in the crash scenario formula that I defined in the previous slide. But currently there uh, are limited prior studies of crash sequence analysis. Uh, and those limited studies found that crash sequences convey information about progression and causation and directly affect crash outcomes. However, there are many sequence analysis methods uh, and techniques applied in biological and social sciences. Uh, for crash sequences, there lacks a methodology to conduct systematic analysis, including the data processing and coding of events and selection of appropriate dissimilarity measures. So we can develop a conceptual framework as shown here. With sequence analysis of crashes and the uh, analysis of their association with ODD variables such as environmental conditions and human factors, we can uh, come up with a library of test scenarios that can be used to uh, develop actual test scenarios in simulation environment and then used to evaluate uh, AV's safety performance. So in this study, sponsored by SaferSim, uh, we used the California AV crash data. So from the uh, actual crash reports, we could ex extract sequence information and uh, characterize them based on their uh, patterns. So this study was designed to first conduct sequence analysis and then evaluate the associations between sequences and ODD variables using uh, cross tabulation analysis. So the data was from the 2015 to 2019 California DMV AV collision reports. Uh, there was a total of 233 reports during that time, and 168 of them were crashes happened when the automated vehicle was in automatic driving mode or uh, was originally in automatic driving mode, but then was uh, disengaged uh, and switched to manual driving mode. Uh, before, right before the collision happened. So the 168 
uh, crash reports were uh, used as the final sets uh, of reports uh, for our analysis. So about the methodology, uh, there are several analyses that can be done to understand the patterns in sequences, including descriptive analysis, uh, which uh, analyzes the lengths and uh, subsequences of crash sequences. And we also want to understand the stochastic patterns, such as the probability of one event transitions to another. So uh, transition matrix was also um, calculated to show uh, the transition rates. And also we want to compare whole sequences. And first we need to understand uh, whole sequence patterns and to compare sequences between each other, we need to uh, employ the similarity metrics to quantify the differences between sequences. So some typical ones uh, are like Levenstein distance, Levenstein two distance, or Hamming distances. These are uh, different measures that can be used to quantify the differences between measures of uh, uh, between sequences. And uh, to compare uh, whole sequence uh, whole sequences, uh, the sequence alignment and uh, optimal matching techniques were also uh, involved. So for example, uh, as I show here, uh, two sequences, if we want to compare the difference between these two sequences, sequence one as S1, PR2, X21 uh, with these three events and sequence two has S1, A1, PR2 and X21, these four events. There are different ways to align these two sequences to make them the same. And uh, there are some operations involved in aligning these two sequences. Uh, the most typical ones are uh, substitution, insertion, and, and deletion. So we kind of uh, want to edit these two sequences or one of these two sequences to make, make, uh, make sequence one and sequence two the same. Uh, there are different ways that you can uh, do that with those three uh, operations. Uh, for example, in this number uh, alignment one, uh, we can replace PR2 with, uh, with A1 and replace X21 in the first sequence with PR2. And, uh, and we can also delete the, delete or insert an element here. We can delete uh, the, the last element in sequence two, or we can add an element X to one to sequence one to make these two sequences uh, the same. And some costs were involved here. And we can uh, then add uh, the cost of those operations together as the total cost for this alignment. So how do we determine which alignment to use to, uh, to use as the, as the difference between the two, the two sequences? So that is uh, to be determined by the optimal matching uh, technique. So the optimal matching basically just uh, compares all possible alignments uh, and their costs, and then select the minimum one, the minimum alignment cost as the, distance between the two sequences. So that means uh, whichever uh, operations uh, you use that generates the minimum cost uh, is considered the, the, shortest dis the shortest distance or the, the difference between the two sequences. So with the, the dissimilarity of sequences quantified, we can then use that as a basis for sequence clustering. The sequence clustering characterizes crashes based on the dissimilarity between sequences. And different clusters reflect different types of progression in crashes. So in our study, we use the K-Medoids uh, method for sequence clustering. 
so this method was used for uh, clustering sequences because the method is good at handling categorical data and is robust to outliers. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, a scenario is a combination of sequences and ODD variables. Uh, the sequence types encodes the actions and interactions of moving objects and the relationships between sequence types and ODD variables can be evaluated using methods such as cross-tabulation. So uh, a project called Pegasus is a, uh, a project evaluating AV safety uh, in Germany. So they developed a layered model showing what elements uh, should be considered in creating uh, scenarios for AV safety evaluation. And here, the moving objects can be encoded by the sequence types that I was talking about. And the other variables depict the operational design domain. So those variables uh, include uh, variables such as road furniture and rolls, uh, roadway geometry, and some temporal, temporal uh, modifications and events like work zones, and also environmental conditions like weather, time of day, lighting conditions. And in the future, we can probably add, also add digital information if we have a connected vehicle or information shared between uh, other road, roadway users uh, and vehicles and also infrastructures. So uh, looking back at uh, our analysis, so uh, 168 AV crashes were used as the final data set. And we extracted uh, sequence information from the text narratives uh, in those reports. Uh, so by doing that, I mean that we need to look at the text narratives and extract short descriptions of events happen during the crash. And then we can come up with uh, like even abstract, even more abstract labels to uh, encode those events. So I, in the final uh, data set, we develop our own event encodings, which include 38 types of events as shown in this table here. So then we use those uh, encoded sequences to do the analysis. Uh, first, we did some analysis with the subsequences, and also we uh, evaluated the transition rates. From analyzing the subsequence patterns, we found that 92% of the AV crashes were cases where a second party vehicle uh, or, a road, uh, or a second party uh, road user hits the AV. And 40% was uh, AV stopped, then hit by a second party vehicle. That's shown here. And from the transition rates, we found that this engagement was a precipitating uh, event for 24% uh, of the crashes. And uh, the transition rates shows that uh, some events have a high probability of having disengagement as a succeeding event. And 68% uh, of, uh, of disengagement were followed by an immediate collision. So sequence clustering was conducted using k Meadows method and, and also the Levenstein distance. Sequences were characterized into seven types as listed here. The seven sequence types are also illustrated in this figure on the right. Each sequence type is represented uh, by a three panel strip here in the figure. The blue vehicle represents an AV in automatic mode uh, and the one with the steering wheel next to it represents a, uh, uh, a disengaged AV, and a black vehicle represents a second party vehicle. So there are many types of road, road users like pedestrians and bicyclists, and also people on e-scooters. Uh, but here in this uh, illustration, I just used a vehicle, a black vehicle to represent the second party uh, participant. 
And we can see that group two shows a very uh, unique sequence uh, where AV stopped at a, uh, at a stop line and started moving, but it stops again. So this is uh, consistent with what we saw uh, in the second video clip that I showed you, uh, where AV was pretty hesitant in uh, proceeding uh, through the intersection. So uh, these are the uh, actual crashes led by this type of uh, behavior. And then following uh, the sequence clustering, we did analysis uh, evaluating the associations between sequence types and uh, some other variables, including uh, crash outcomes, uh, like this one, injury severity levels. Uh, so we did cross tabulation analysis and also a chi-square test to uh, evaluate whether there's significant associations uh, between sequence types and these variables uh, or not. So this shows that there were uh, significant associations between sequence types and injury severity levels. And also uh, manners of collision and sequence types and sequence groups uh, also uh, distributed differently among different facility types, like intersection road segments and also parking lots. And also it distributed differently across different times of day. So daytime, nighttime, we get different uh, percentages of different types of uh, crash sequences. So then we look deeper into the evolution of AV crash sequence types uh, and the percentage of the hesitation group, which is group two, uh, reduced from 2015 to 2019. This was quite interesting. And in any case that AV testing organizations might have made some progress uh, to uh, address that uh, issue of AV's hesitant behavior at intersections. Um, but this, uh, this is only uh, purely based on empirical inference of the sequence analysis results. And there may be other reasons leading to what we observed here. So given the association between sequence types and input variables like facility types, time of day, uh, we can uh, propose this scenario-based AV testing framework that embeds uh, sequences uh, as the core of uh, this uh, framework. So we can develop test scenarios using ODD variables like time of day and facility types and uh, tell the story of uh, crashes and put the uh, the AVs into this simulation environment probably uh, to see what the crash outcomes of those uh, scenarios are for AVs. And since we also have some uh, outcome, uh, outcome data from the uh, crash crashes that we observed uh, in AV testing, we can compare those uh, crash rates probably with uh, what we get from the simulations. So as a summary, uh, sequence analysis uh, helps us to discover unique patterns in AV crashes from this study. And AV crashes were characterized as seven types. Uh, AV crash sequences uh, were found to be associated with crash outcomes and also environmental condition variables. And that can help us to uh, develop a scenario-based AV safety evaluation framework with crash sequences embedded as a core component to help us further evaluate the safety of AVs. So that's all I have uh, here today uh, for our study. Um, so I'm welcome, I'm welcome uh, for any questions. Thank you, Fred. And as he just mentioned, we do have a few moments here for questions or comments. Um, feel free to use the chat box or you can unmute yourself if needed.
And while we're waiting for questions, uh, I do want to thank everyone again for their interest in Safer Sim research. Uh, we will make this presentation available online on our YouTube channel and website within the next couple of days. And we will share that recording with all the registrants. So feel free to share that with any colleagues that may be interested. I will also include Fred's email address and uh, the PDF version of the presentation as well. Um, so if you do have any follow-up questions or comments that you can't think of right now, feel free to reach out to Fred directly. Yeah. So our study has also been published as a journal paper in Accident Analysis and Prevention. So I put the information here. Uh, if you would like to know more about it, you can go directly to the paper. And if you have questions, just shoot me an email. Perfect. Okay. Uh, one question. Sure. Uh, what about partial sequ sequences? Uh, does that kind of affect um, you know, your calculations? Uh, sorry, what was that? What sequences? I didn't catch Partial, partial uh, sequences where, uh, you know, part of the sequences overlap on top of each other, or sometimes they do not overlap completely. Uh, I still didn't catch you. Uh, sorry. Uh, what sequences? Partial. Uh, partial sequences. Yes. Uh, I, I think I'm not very clear of what uh, a partial sequence is. Could As in like, Part of the sequence overlaps over the other part, like, you know, they're, they're not complete overlap in time or, uh, you know, they do not overlap, they do not cluster well in, in, in time. Um, does that uh, affect so generations? In our study, we don't really consider the time as the we we just we only use chronologically ordered sequences but not necessarily okay match in time so we we, we don't have the uh the time stamps okay. available we just have like what event happened first and what event uh happened then after it yeah okay. so we don't uh really have that uh, problem of um like aligning Al aligning uh, sequences based on time. Okay, thanks. We want to thank you all again for coming. And Fred, I want to thank you for your time and for your presentation. Well, thank you very much. And uh, also thank uh, Sir Sim for sponsoring our study. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'm glad to have this opportunity to present our study results.